This week on Tech Wrap, is Apple working on a lower end version of the iPhone? Social media expert Amber Mack gives us a social media tip, and we take a look at all the best technology of CES 2013. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is Tech Wrap. While nothing spectacular happened at the 2013 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this week, there is still plenty of tech news to go around. Perfectly timed are reports that Apple is working on a lower end version of the iPhone. The Wall Street Journal was first to report that Apple was working on what it calls a low priced iPhone, saying that a change in corporate strategy was in order to address Apple's slipping dominance in the smartphone market. Bloomberg posts a similar piece, adding the low-end iPhone will be priced anywhere between $99 to $149, or about 4,000 to 6,000 pesos, and that it'll be released in the last quarter of 2013. While the words low-end or cheap have never been associated with Apple, when asked about these rumors, Apple SVP Phil Schiller tells the Shanghai Evening News that Apple never blindly chased market share. Could this be a cryptic way of saying, yes, we're making one, but we're not doing this blindly? After 12 years, Microsoft says goodbye to Windows Messenger. In an email blast sent out to users this week, the tech giant says that Windows Messenger, also known as MSN Messenger, will be retired on March 15, 2013. Users are asked to move to Skype, a service which Microsoft bought in 2011. A recent update to Skype for Windows gives Microsoft's desktop mail client Outlook Skype integration. Users can now chat with Skype contacts and make VOIP calls to mobile and landlines directly from the app. Skype also updates its Mac client. Users can now make calls from inside Safari. And now a confession. Here's news that I really can't hold back my excitement about. Nintendo teases Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. The two much anticipated sequels to the very popular series come with a whole new 3D world, new starter Pokemon, and new legendary Pokemon. You gotta catch them all. In the sixth series of the core Pokemon game, there is plenty to look forward to. If the trailer is any indication, we can see players running through fields, jumping through vines, scenery never seen before in the game, and intense battle scenes. Meet the starter Pokemon. Your grass starter is Chespin, your fire starter is Fennekin, and your water starter, Froki. Of course, two legendaries come with the game. Pokemon Y will come with this still unnamed mythical bird, and Pokemon X will come with this deer with iridescent rainbow antlers. There's good news and bad news. The game will only run on Nintendo 3DS, so if you don't have one, you'll need to buy one if you want to play the game. Also, the game doesn't come out till October. But the good news is that for the first time ever, the whole world will get the game at the same time. So no need to wait jealously as Japan-based gamers start enjoying the game without us. Also worth noting this week, Nokia exceeds sales expectations, selling 4.4 million Lumia phones in the fourth quarter of 2012. Google CEO Eric Schmidt visits North Korea to encourage the isolated nation to embrace the internet. Also in Asia is Apple CEO Tim Cook. Cook is in Beijing and he visits China Mobile Chair Xi Guohua to discuss matters of cooperation. Back in 2005, before YouTube was a Google-owned company, I used to produce and host my own video podcast called HIT. Insert embarrassing screen grab here. That's where I met Amber Mack, then host of Tech TV's Call for Help and producer of one of the very first video podcasts in the whole world, Command N. Now, aside from hosting her own show, App Central in Canada, and running her own digital marketing company, Amber is also the best-selling author of the social media guide, Power Friending. Check out Amber's social media tip. Hi, I'm Amber Mack with my social media tip for Tech Wrap. This week I wanted to talk about one of the best examples I've ever seen online as far as a brand who's doing a phenomenal job with social media. The name of the company is Maersk. This is a global company well known for their shipping lines. And they've done a great job of using social media. In fact, they use nine different social media services to get out to their customers and fans. They use services like Instagram, Vimeo, and the list goes on and on. One of the things that I really like that they do is they integrate all of these different social media services on one website where you can go to get all things social for Maersk. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon. 
The Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas is always one of the most anticipated tech events every year. That's because this is where we see some of the biggest and most groundbreaking innovations in technology make an appearance before they make their way to consumer devices. That didn't really happen at CES 2013. This year was all about the independent hardware developer. That said, we believe more and more tech companies are starting to realize that they don't need CES, that they can launch their own products on their own and do it successfully. That said, there were still some highlights. Let's take a look. At first glance, you'd think it was a normal desktop computer, but Lenovo is calling this one a table PC. Push back its stand and it becomes a humongous 27-inch tablet. When propped down, you can use the device to sort through projects you are working on, view photos, and even play games. A game of air hockey seems very appealing. Because of its size, when propped up, it also makes a great device for video calls and watching movies. If you're in the market for a new home PC, consider this. The Lenovo Horizon starts at $999 and will begin shipping this summer. Last week, TechRap viewer Ivan Herrera left us a message on Facebook telling us to look into the Oculus Rift. While developers of the virtual reality goggles were at CES to show off a prototype of the device. Unlike other VR headsets, this headset gives users a diagonal field of view of 110 degrees. So gamers feel like they are immersed in the gaming world. Imagine an Xbox 360 controller with a built-in 5-inch screen and powered by the Android OS. That's the NVIDIA Shield. With iOS and Android games taking on handheld gaming devices, the Shield is an interesting fusion of both worlds. No word on pricing yet, but the device should be available by the end of 2013. There were a lot of interesting televisions at CES. Samsung showed off the world's first curved television. Panasonic was one of two manufacturers to come up with an OLED 4K TV. It also teased a 20-inch 4K Windows 8 tablet. Sharp went one step further with an 86-inch 8K display. One of the funkiest trends was Samsung's dual-view OLED TV that allows two people to watch two different shows at the same time. Samsung also showed off transparent LCDs, similar to what I saw at the Samsung D-Lite showcase in Seoul earlier this year, hinting that one day we might have transparent televisions. And that was Tech Wrap. Events to look out for this month, don't forget, Facebook has a special announcement on January 15th, and RIM launches BlackBerry OS 10 on January 30th. For news and updates, don't forget to follow Rappler.com on Twitter and Facebook. And if you have any tech questions or requests about what you like featured on the show, send me an email, techwrap at Rappler.com, or a message on Twitter using the hashtag TechRap. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.